I hope you're having a wonderful day today. If you are following along with these videos as I'm posting them, we're just past halfway in September. My goal is to post a new video, record a new video every single day and get a new one up on the channel after a long stint of no tutorials. And in this video, I want to show a feature that can be intimidating for newer editors and newer users of Final Cut Pro 10, but is actually very useful for organizing your projects. Now, the projects that this is usually useful for are longer form projects. The longer and the more clips you have, the more useful this index is going to be. And it's an index, like you can think of an index in the back of a book. If you have a book that's only 10 pages, an index can be useful if you're looking for maybe a specific word, but they're really useful in those long, long books when you have chapters after chapters and all kinds of content. So this project is nothing. I've just put a whole bunch of random clips together, so there's not actually any theme to this project, but it's a little over 20 minutes, and I have a lot of markers on it and some other, other things that we'll see in a second. We're going to use the index to navigate around it. So on the left column here, you do have the index button on the toolbar. You'll want to click that or use the shortcut shift command two, and that'll let you access the timeline index. The first thing you'll notice is there's a search field at the top. You can click in this search field and start to type in a word. Say I want to find my hiking clips. I can start typing in hiking and you can see I have three hiking multicam clips in this project. I can see where they are position-wise. I don't have any notes on these clips, but I could definitely go in here, click in and add in a note, and that would let me basically search it. This is really great for uh, if you're a, maybe a producer reviewing something, you want to add notes for the editor, or you're an editor and you just want to go and, and find a specific clip, remember something that's there, you can do that. Uh, as you click on any of these clips, notice in the timeline it is navigating to where that clip is. So I'm going to hit the X next to the search field and go out of it. And I am in the clip section, which is, this is just a list of every single clip that's in this project. If I click on the first one, notice the uh, playhead there jumps to the first clip, and that's what we're seeing. And I can scroll through this list. On the left side, I see that if it's a picture or still image, it'll have that. Here we have a gradient generator, so we see the generator sign. We have a T for title, so we see that. Uh, and it's just an entire list of everything that's in your project. At the bottom, you can click on video, audio, or titles to, to sort through this list and see just that type of clip. So if I want to see just the titles in this project, there's three titles. There's a Final Cut Pro title, the scrolling title, it's over here, and then Dogs of Instagram is on there. Or I could see just the audio, just the video. And what this is, this is, is specifically for going through and navigating or selecting clips. Um, you can use this to go through and remove something. So if there's a clip in here you don't want in your project, uh, let me choose one that's a longer clip, something that'll be a little bit more obvious. Let's do, yeah, here's the video clip, which is this one here. I have it selected. I'm just going to hit the delete key on the keyboard and notice it removes it. So you can use this. Uh, index to select clips and remove them. You can click on one, hold shift, click on another one, select a whole group, hit delete, and it'll remove that. I'm going to do command Z to undo those two deletes because I want those in there. And that's what this first section is for. So this is for, uh, again, just seeing all of your edits and being able to navigate around your clip, which some people find this much more useful compared to navigating in the timeline and having to zoom in, zoom out. You can do it right on here. Um, at the top here, you can control click or right click on these columns, and you can add additional ones. Right now we were just seeing the position and the notes, but you can also see like the video rolls and the audio rolls and active angle, if you're using multicam clip stuff, you can see that right up here. You can then, if those are act, uh, uh, added, if those columns are added, you can use the, the index here to change what those clips are. So you can change the rolls on the fly in the... Um, the index. So that's the clip section. Uh, the next one over we have tags. If you are tagging uh, and adding more metadata to your clips, those tags are here as well and you can use that as a way to navigate. So for example, I've added keywords like outside to clips. I can go and see 
those um, keywords, navigate to them. Uh, this one I'm not going to dive into too much detail on. You can see all my markers that I've added. But at the bottom, just like you can uh, narrow it down with the clips, you can also narrow down what tags you're seeing. So if you just want to see, for example, to-do items, I can go over and there's an option here to see just the to-do items. And we have, in this one I just added one, so I see that single to-do item. Uh, this is the completed to-do item, so that's the completed one. I can hit the one next to it to see the uh, non-completed to-do items. So those are there. If you click the little icon here, you are completing them. And on the right here, then I can see those are all completed. Or I can click here and uncheck them, and now they're over here as uh, to-do items that need to be done. So you have a lot of options here to go through and sort and see the data that's in here. I like the chapter markers as well. You can jump to specific spots in your project that way. Um, I've, been, I've been zoomed out all the way. Let me zoom in because you can use this to navigate when you're zoomed in as well. Uh, so that's tags. Should be, you know, if you're following all along with this, this should be starting to become familiar. If you've never seen the index already, you should start to become familiar with it. Even though there's so much data on the side here, really it's just a way to click around and navigate through your project. And we can do the same thing then with roles. We see our roles here. And this, again, very similar to adding keywords or uh, other metadata to your projects. If you're adding roles to your uh, different clips that you're adding in, you'll be able to see those here. And on the right here, we actually get some additional information, which is pretty cool. So the first one I'm going to show is captions. I have uh, on the beginning of this project, I put some English uh, captions here just to have a caption tag, uh, track that we can mess with. And using the index, we can enable and disable uh, the captions track so we can very easily see if they're uh, ITT format or maybe the 608 format. And then we have this button on the right side here that we can use to show or hide those caption tracks. And I've, I've had so many questions come in with these captions because they're very hidden if you don't know where to look or where to enable them because you can go up to the view menu and there's an option to show captions and we can go down here to English to see those. But then if we've hidden the track, we don't see that. And you might be wondering why you're seeing this and it's not on the timeline. Well, the index is where you want to go. Go to index, roles, captions, and then this little button on the right you can use to enable or disable uh, that captions track. We can also enable and disable all captions from being able to see them in the actual viewer by unchecking them uh, here on the left side. Uh, again, this is just one English track, but if we had, uh, say, other languages, we'd see all those listed on the left here and be able to enable and disable them uh, on the left there. We then see our video uh, and title uh, roles here and all the rest of the roles. When you click on a role, say music, for example, I'm going to scroll down here, notice on the, the timeline it highlights those clips. So if I want to see just the dialogue clips, I click on them, and it highlights these couple of videos, these ones that are dialogue tracks, these couple over here as well. So this is a way for you to go through and uh, select them. In a very similar way, you can go on the right side here, click on these lanes, and use them as a way to uh, highlight or make these clips stand out um, by collapsing them or, or expanding them. Same here with the one on the right side. We can use this to expand out and see the subcategories of the roles, if we have any sub-roles on those. And then the last one here, this little uh, circle on the right, lets us focus on those clips. So notice, like the music track, for example, here, and the sound effects. If I check this off and enable it, it kind of just shrinks down all of those other ones. And with very large projects, especially if you have multiple layers, you can then use these as a way to uh, strip out all the clips you're not focusing on and just edit very specific ones. So you could select, for example, your sound effects. And if you're just working on sound effects, you could hide the music, hide the dialogue, and just work with the effects using the index here. Uh, the other thing at the bottom, you have a quick way to get into edit roles if you need to do that. Uh, actually, edit roles, one th other thing, you have a captions button here too. So this is where you'll see those other captions tracks. Uh, I just like to point out anything with captions because it's kind of hidden in there. But then we have an option here, show audio lanes. And one of the things that Final Cut Pro 10 did when we started with Final Cut 10 and moved over from Final Cut 7 is Final Cut Pro 7 used tracks. And many other applications are track-based. 
So with audio lanes, this is a way for Final Cut Pro 10 to kind of get your audio tracks back. When you turn on the audio lanes, notice we now have an, a lane for music, effects, the dialogue has a lane, and it's very similar to seeing a track for each of those types of audio. And it groups them. If we look over here with the dialogue, comparing it to the sound effects, they're now grouped together. I can go and hide the audio lanes and everything's kind of working like the magnetic timeline was designed to work where everything shrinks down. But those lanes are a really nice way to uh, work with audio, especially if you're used to programs and apps like Logic or Pro Tools. When you're dealing with audio that way, this can be very helpful. And then the last tab that we have here is the captions tab. This one is only going to be useful if you're actually using captions. But on the left column, I can see a list of every single one of my captions in the project. I can use the search field to narrow down and find a specific caption. So if I'm looking for Final Cut, I can see that here in the left column. I can then click on a caption and it navigates right to that. And if I scroll up, this is the captions all the way at the top there. Um, and then what's really nice here too, I'm gonna X out of the search so you can see out of everything. With captions, they have to be formatted a specific way. And if they're not, Final Cut is going to present an error. And that's why some of these are red. Those are the ones with errors, but we can also go down here and just say view errors. If we do that, we see just the captions that have errors and using the index, you can go through very quickly and edit these without needing to kind of jump one by one through those captions. So what I'll usually do with the captions track, I'm gonna command plus here a couple times to zoom in to my captions. And here I can see the ones that have an error. And using the index on the side, I'm able to navigate between each one of those captions. And for the errors, I'm not going to go to too much detail with this, but for the errors, we'll see the, what the error is on the right side. In this case, it's not, it can't overlap. So I can go in here and adjust this one so it doesn't overlap. Uh, let's just shrink it down. Of course, I get a little spinning wheel. So once I do that, then the error goes away. And you'll, uh, you may not have noticed, but in the um, the index here on the left side, once that error has been resolved and it's not there anymore, then uh, it disappears from the error list. So you can use this error list as a way to see where you are when you have um, the captions and the errors resolved. So notice here in the timeline, I don't see where my next one is. I could certainly scroll over or use the, the hand tool to navigate, but instead I can just use the index, click on the next one, it jumps right to where that error is and I can now adjust that caption track, use the index again, navigate to the next one, make the adjustment, and, uh, and then I'm good to go. So that's kind of one way to use the timeline index, but very similar. If you're, you don't have to use the caption section to navigate, you could do that on the clips as well if you're trying to go through, or if you know you're trying to go through your to-do items that you've added in, we could then switch over to tags, go to another to-do list, click on the first to-do item, see what it is, make the correction, check it off, click on the next to-do item, do what it is, check it off, click on the next one. So that's an overview, you know, hopefully a detailed overview of the, uh, the timeline index inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Hopefully you'll use it in your uh, editing. And if this tip was helpful for you, definitely give the video a thumbs up at the bottom. And again, if there's something specific you're wanting to know or learn, let me know. If you're not sure what you want to learn or know, that you know, a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. So uh, one resource that I've been creating over almost the past year is on Instagram. If you go to Instagram.com slash Final Cut Pro Help, every single day since December of last year, I've been posting a shortcut, one of the keyboard shortcuts, and a short video of what that keyboard shortcut does, just so you can see what it is. And what I found is a lot of people have been DMing me and, and messaging me about their questions that they've had, or specifically they've seen a shortcut and they want to know a little bit more about it. Uh, definitely don't hesitate. Reach out to me. Let me know what that shortcut is, what ones you liked. If there was one that didn't make any sense to you, I want to want to hear about it. One person did reach out to me saying that it was confusing using the shortcuts because I didn't show you what the shortcut was when I was clicking on the keyboards. 
And if you go way back, you'll see the earlier videos don't have the keys on the screen when I do the shortcut, and now the newer ones do, and that was just based on feedback. So please, I love your feedback, love hearing it. Even if you don't like something, those are the you know, those constructive feedbacks. Uh, that's always useful to hear. So hopefully this one was helpful for you. Otherwise, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.